At 7,500 light years away and 100 light years wide, LBN 667, also known as the Sol Nebula, would appear in our skies to be about six times the size of the full moon were it visible to the naked eye. But point a telescope at it and reveal its light with a good camera, and this oval nebula quickly reveals itself to be one of the great wonders of the nighttime sky. It is shaped almost like an egg with a shell of nebulous gases, with whiffs of smoke and cloud and cones and spires along its outer rims. Its only failing in terms of its aesthetic appeal is its fairly monotonous color, red. The image you are now seeing I made just two nights ago with a Player One Uranus C uncooled camera. Its 585 MC sensor is a color sensor, and the only filter I was using on the camera was an IR UV cut filter because the 585 sensor is relatively sensitive to infrared light, which could interfere with focusing. This image presents the true color, more or less, that we humans would perceive with the naked eye. Back in August, I also trained the telescope on the nebula all night and made a mosaic, this time using a ZWO duo band filter. It gave interesting results, but the color of the nebula was still less than eye-catching. And yet the image of the Sol Nebula, as presented in Stellarium, clearly shows other colors hidden within. Some beautiful blues hidden beneath that red. Can we bring them out without a filter? Let's find out. I'm working with the data that I captured two nights ago. I imaged an entire mosaic of the Sol, this time in broadband, and later on I'll make this data into a mosaic. But right now, we're just going to develop the interesting heart of the Sol Nebula and see if we can find that beautiful color hidden within. And you know what? We're going to do it without any expensive filters. And without applying false color, we are simply going to bring out the hidden color within. So, I've already run spectrophotometric color calibration. I did not add any further color calibration to this image as the results from the spectrophotometric color calibration appeared to be adequate. Working with an even more powerful version of my editing technique that I am now referring to as the ADP or Aesthetic Development Protocol, I ran Blur, Noise, and Star Exterminator on the image in that order. This gives us a star plate with truly deconvolved stars. They're nice and small, and that's going to be very useful for this image in our final development. And sometimes I don't deconvolve stars at all in images. I find it nice to really bring them out, let them be bigger. Sometimes I simply deconvolve them by sharpening, a technique I'll go over in a later video. It all depends on what I want the final image to look like. But this image has over 10,000 stars in it, well over. And that's a lot of stars. So that the stars do not entirely overwhelm the nebula within the image, I wanted to shrink them through deconvolution and thereby make them a little less overwhelming. I then identified the deconvolved star plate as stars BXT you can see it in the work area on the lower left. That's where I put files that I'm going to use later aside to let me know they need further processing in an image. On the tableau of the nebula itself, I undid all the previous changes. So I undid star exterminator, then noise extermination, and then blur extermination, bringing the tableau back to its starting place. I did this because earlier I had experimented on a plate that was developed in the so-called proper method in which the blur exterminator was run first on linear data, and then I began enhancing the image. No amount of denoising by any means whatsoever would clean that image up. Now I knew this was going to be the outcome. I've done this many times before, and I'm not going to waste any more time on this experiment. So after extracting a plate with deconvolved stars, we backed up the plates with the nebula, reversing the star extermination, noise extermination, and blur extermination, and returning us to an almost virgin plate, the only thing at this point that has been done to the tableau is spectrophotometric color calibration has been run. Now let's get into the active business of editing this image. The first thing I did was run Star Exterminator again. I'll go into why in depth in an upcoming video called How to Get Deconvolved Stars When Using the Aesthetic Development Protocol. It'll be out in just a few days. But now from this image, I've extracted the undeconvolved stars because they're just such a huge part of the image and the nebula itself is very faint. I don't want the stars in the image at all while I'm developing it. They will completely overwhelm the nebula. I identified that star plate as junk stars and put it on the lower right where I put plates that I think I'm going to toss away. I don't really like to toss away anything until I'm done with the editing process because you never know what'll come in handy. Now, using the histogram transformation tool and applying the theory of histogram transformation that I went over several videos back, which I'll link here. 
I'm going to move the left icon on the histogram transformation tool right up to the left edge of the relevant data in the light curve. And I'm going to move the middle icon right up to the right edge of the relevant data in the light curve. This provides a nice flat image and allows the images to be worked with the Curves tool in a way that most photographers are used to working with curves from other image editing applications. The advantage of working in the Curves tool is there we can see the live application of changes and this allows us to make very fine adjustments. Since so much can be accomplished in the Curves tool, we can often avoid having to use Pixinsight's powerful but often clunky other tools. I mean, if you're like me, you get sick of having to mess with all these tools where you fiddle with this number, that number, press a button, see what the outcome is, go back, try to redo it, eventually get frustrated, and then settle for a half-baked image. So the histogram making portion of the process always goes quickly, and in just a few seconds it's done. Now we're going to move on to the next major step in editing this image. We're going to open the Curves tool. Now this nebula has a lot of color hidden away within it. And it's very subtle, so I usually start off working on the luminance channel, but this time I'm going to work on the luminance slash RGB channel, or as it's labeled in PixInsight, the RGB slash K. And I'm going to make a modified S-curve to raise the brights and lower the darks, darken the space somewhat, but at the same time to increase the saturation of the colors within the nebula. Because all the colors are being increased together, we are increasing the natural color of the nebula, so it becomes something that we can work with. When I have the saturation and curves together where I want them, I'm going to open the luminance channel and further adjust just the brightness of the image so as not to further change the color. The gases in this nebula are somewhat diffuse and don't look highly resolved. This will allow us to naturally increase the contrast just a little bit, which has an overall sharpening effect on the image without actually applying a sharpening tool. In the end, I decided that I needed to see the color changes on the individual red, green, and blue channels before I adjusted the luminance too much. This is because changing color, especially on the green channel, is going to affect how brightly the human eye perceives the image. So at this moment, there are colors hidden away in that image and I want to bring them out. There's blue in the heart of the nebula and to bring that out, we're just going to create a very slight curve on the blue channel a slightly modified C-curve with a dip at the bottom to minimize coloring the space around the nebula, which should be as black as possible. So two grab points on the blue channel and then another grab point near the very bottom to pull it down just slightly accomplishes that. You can see now we've added some green to the space, so we're going to work the green channel now. We'll parallel the green channel to the upper side of the blue channel. This keeps our colors true in the brighter regions. And then we'll just pull down the green channel in the lower area, once again returning the space to black. At this point, the image is very noisy and sloppy. And since color noise is a thing, experience has taught me that working the saturation curves can add to that noise. So I'm going to go ahead and run the noise exterminator now. It's a little earlier than I usually do, but I feel that now is an appropriate time. It'll help remove that noise and give me a better sense of what the final target image should look like. Now we're going to pop over to the red channel and raise the red just a little bit on the upper side in order to enhance the brighter luminance reds, but pull it down toward the middle to leave the reds extracted out of the natural color in the middle ranges of luminance. Red, as is the case with so many deep space objects, is a dominating color, but there are other colors hidden within, and just removing a little red in particular ranges of luminance can allow those colors hiding within an image to show through. Think of it this way, filters remove light by frequency and frequency equals color. We can do something similar digitally by restricting light on certain color channels except by luminance. And then finally we're going to pull down the red channel at the very bottom because the transformation of the red channel lifted the curve all the way and we need to pull it down at the bottom to, to blacken the space, otherwise the black space around the nebula is going to have a bit of a red tinge around it. Now I can see there's still a bit too much blue and green in the space and I can blacken that further. So I'm going to reset the Curves Transformation tool, drag the lower 10 or 15% of the Curves tool down to extract the blue from the darkest region of the space around the nebula. And then I'm going to restore the rest of the blue channel to a flat geometry in which the curve travels straight up the middle squares of the Curve Transformation tool. This restores our true color after extracting the blue out of the space. Then I'm going to perform the exact same procedure on the green channel to extract that green out of the dark space around the nebula. Darkening the space will also allow the contrast of the colors within the nebula to show through even better. This looks good. It's now time to run the blur exterminator on the image, but with the steep difference in contrast between the dark areas and the brighter areas and the steep difference in colors, 
I don't want the blur exterminator to over sharpen the background. That'll lead to crushing the blacks and blasting the brights. I also don't want blur exterminator to make any changes to the delicate balance of color here. That can occasionally lead to color artifacts which often show up as strange blotchy patches. So on the blur exterminator panel, I've reduced the sharpened non stellar slider down to 0 0.30. Reducing the normal amount blur exterminator will sharpen by 40%. I've also checked the luminance only option so that the blur exterminator only works on the luminance channel and leaves the colors alone. This yields a very nice final image, not over sharpened with great coloration. I can see there is just a little blue and green left in the space. And I want to remove that before I do the final editing on this image. So once again, I'm just going to open up the curves transformation tool and drop the very bottom of the blue and green channels just a little, just enough to extract the blue and green out of the black space, or what should be black space, and then flatten out the rest of the blue and green channels, which is to say, making sure all the upper regions of the blue and green channels run straight between the lower left and the upper right corners. This keeps our image to a sort of true false color, where the image shows the colors actually hidden away in the nebula when you turn down the reds in the lower to middle luminance ranges. Now all I have to do is stretch up the histogram on the star's BXT plate to get those stars at a good brightness where they will show up well in the nebula without overwhelming it. On the histogram transformation tool we eyeball this and then switch over to the curves tool to make our final transformations, increasing the saturation only and just enough to allow the color of the stars to show through. And you might notice here that I dragged down the lower points of the saturation curve just a little bit. That's to reduce the possibility of color noise in the image. Stars are bright, so we only drag up the saturation on the upper side of the curve. By keeping the lower side of the curve low, we help keep potential color noise out of the dark space. Now, we're going to switch out of PixInsight into my other favorite astro image editing tool. Well, heck, my favorite overall photography editing tool, Affinity Photo. We put the tableau or plates of the nebula in the background, and then we're going to drag the star plates in over the nebula layer, go to the compositing options on the right middle panel, and select the screen composites option. This allows the stars to show accurately over the nebula. Now, this image looks nice, but there's just a couple of flaws yet that I want to deal with. I know I'm always saying don't hypersaturate your images, but this image could use a touch more saturation and contrast, but no contrast in the stars. That would act like a false deconvolution effect. So we're going to put the curves tool just on the nebula layer, and we're just going to tighten up the curve in the lower left and the upper right to slightly increase the contrast of the entire image. This will increase it both across saturation and luminance. The other thing to deal with is those blotchy patches at the bottom center of the image. These artifacts have been created by modifying saturation and luminance values which have over-contrasted this area. And they just look blotchy, they detract from the beauty of the image. We're going to deal with that by adding a Gaussian blur filter into the nebula layer and using the slider tool to crank up the radius, which adds blur to the entire image. Now of course we don't want to blur the entire image, we just want to soften the patchiness at the lower center. So once we have the Gaussian blur filter set where we want it, we're going to switch to our erase tool Make sure that we have the Gaussian Blur Filter layer selected so the Erase tool only affects that layer. And then we're just going to erase out everywhere that we don't want blurred, which is the entire nebulous structure. In fact, pretty much the entire image except for the lower center. This is easy and goes quite quickly. Watch the transformation. Notice as the brush moves, we're restoring sharpness to all those regions of the image. As we get toward the bottom of the image and we have to be more and more precise, we'll shrink that brush and we'll also turn down the radius and flow of the brush so that it has a softer effect on the image because we're getting close to the area affected. We don't want a sudden transition into that area, which will look choppy. And then we're going to pass it over all the regions of the nebula that we want to restore sharpness to. Everything except for those blotchy patches at the very bottom. Also note that by placing the Gaussian blur filter on only the nebula layer, we have not at all affected the deconvolution of the stars not even down at the lower bottom center, where we are going to leave the Gaussian filter blurring part of the nebulous image. We're just affecting the blur over those blotchy patches that were down there, effectively defocusing them so that they are not detracting from the overall aesthetic quality of the image. I think the image would benefit from just a little more contrast, drawing down the darks just slightly and increasing the brights just slightly. And I much prefer to do this with the Curves tool than the Contrast tool. It just gives me a lot finer control. 
I'm sure you've noticed, I do almost all the editing in Curves. It is an exceedingly powerful tool and gives you much finer control of so much of the editing process. The Curves tool is only on the Nebula layer. I'm only increasing the contrast there. And I'm happy with the way that looks. It gets the fog of low contrast out of the image. So at this point, we're getting down to the last steps. We need to crop out the diffuse edges, which resulted from the stacking process. Affinity Photo has a very simple, quick, and efficient cropping tool. We can easily zoom in and get perfect crops out of that. When this part of the process is done, we get a final image of the Sol Nebula. But think of this more as just another plate that we are going to apply in one more layer of further processing. Remember that true color image of the Sol Nebula that we showed at the beginning of the video? The true color gives us rich, deep dark blacks in the space, brilliant reds, and a gorgeous, refined sharpness in the image. All by itself, this is a beautiful image, and I like this image too. I will consider this one of the finished images. But, with the power of compositing in Affinity Photo, we can take the characteristics that are strengths in this image and apply them to our other image where we would like to emphasize the colors hidden within the nebula. We simply drag the image of the True Color Nebula into Affinity Photo, make sure the Soul Nebula True Color layer is at the top, and then use our powerful compositing tools again and select the Luminosity option. This carries over characteristics of luminosity, which includes a little of the saturation and the sharpness into the Alt Color Nebula layer below and helps balance out the coloration of the black space regions, so that the final image looks like this. A final image blending the gorgeous reds and the hidden colors of the nebula with the sharpness that we find in the red channel and deeper, more balanced space. In this video, we were able to bring out the true hidden colors of the Sol Nebula by way of digital filtering. This allows us to work in frequency ranges, which are the red, green, and blue channels. And within those channels, we can control the colors that we want to limit or enhance by making very specific changes to the relevant channel's luminance value on the Curves tool. And when used judiciously, this technique can help us bring out the colors that are hidden behind dominant colors, usually red, within non-stellar structures. Then, we can push out of PixInsight to other photo editing applications, especially those applications that allow for layering and compositing, and take advantage of those tools to make fine and powerful adjustments to characteristics such as sharpness and contrast. As always, I hope you learned something. I know I take a different approach to astro image editing, but hopefully you find it useful in your own work. I'm a firm believer that the equipment that we have can give us much, much better results if we develop better. I mean, after all, I made this image with nothing but an 80 millimeter telescope and an uncold planetary OSC camera. Let me know if you have any questions and don't hesitate to comment or hit that like or dislike button if you prefer. And it wouldn't hurt if you hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.